Hello, everybody. Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar. My name is Linda Marie Beitler and I work with Pathwise and I will be your moderator here during the next hour. We are here at Pathwise in partnership with Azimuth Compliance Consulting as well as Soft Expert. So we're glad to be here with our partners. Um, just a few things to share before we get started into the content of our presentation. Just know you are all on mute to eliminate any background noise, but you can see you have your GoToWebinar control panel. And on this, there is a text box. And this is where you can write any questions, including those you have for the presenter during our time together. So feel free to write any communication you have in the box at any time. Just know those presenter questions will be held until the end of his presentation. Um, so we're going to go through the presentation. We're going to go over questions. And then we're going to have a presentation kind of showing an example of the things that we were talking about in a document control system and how that works. Um, so, so that's our agenda for the day. And so we're excited to have Kevin Bogert here as our presenter. And Kevin, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Well, thank you, Linda. And thank you, Pathwise, for presenting this webinar on why my electronic document control system may only be a document management system how to avoid the next 483. My screen works, we'll be good. There we go. Okay, as Linda said, my name's Kevin Bogert. I'm from Azimuth Compliance Consulting and we have Jonas Sears who is from Soft Expert. I'll give a little background on myself. About 29 years in the life science industry, doing different things over the years, training, quality, regulatory systems. Um, but my main focus has always been around automating our manufacturing and laboratory processes, finding solutions that can make your life a lot easier. Jonas Sear, who's from Soft Expert, has a background in math or a degree in math and production engineering, extensive knowledge in knowledge and content management. Pathwise, who's Pathwise? Company's been around since 1993. They specialize in quality system improvement, remediation, auditing, consulting, and so forth. They have a wide library of GXP-based training content that you can easily use and integrate to something like Soft Experts Training Module or any other product on the market. Myself, Azimuth Compliance Consulting. We specialize in helping companies that are regulated by HHS, FDA, and EU regulations, and other global regulations, <laughs> mainly focused on healthcare and the life science industry. We work with a product which is BPM-based. If you're not familiar with this, this is business process management software, the next generation of software coming to the market. It's been around for a few years, probably six, seven, eight years, BPM has been there. It's now maturing. It's moving you away from siloed-based systems to platform-based applications. Um, we'll discuss a little bit more of that a little later. Soft Expert in business since 1995, specializing in business process improvement and compliance management software and applications. Their platform is a BPM management system or platform that allows you to automate basically anything in your organization on one platform, fully integrated. The agenda for today, getting back to our main subject, is document control systems. What is a document control system? Recent findings on a 483 for a company that was audited by the FDA in 2018 related to document control systems and their software. What is a controlled document per ISO and FDA? There are some discrepancies between the two, and ISO is becoming the predominant standard to follow. What can be done to ensure your company does not encounter the same observations of the company that got the 483? What could you do in the future to eliminate paper forms? What they were mainly got their observation for? And then any questions you may have that we can help answer or may have to answer at a later time. We then go into a live demo where we'll show how a system can help you control documents and your document control process. Just focused on what the findings were in the 483. That's what the demo will be about. It's not for a software demo. 
Next, this has made what your world looks like in document control. Paper coming in from all sources just piling up. You need to deal with it. If that's not your world, it's probably more like this. On shelves, binders, folders, bins, whatever it is. You have a lot of documentation. A lot of these are typically batch records, lab reports, whatever, that's just stored as paper in folders versus inside of electronic system. Question is, why are you generating the paper in the first place? So this is a typical, what I see as a document control system in the life science industry and in other industries as well. You have the document initiation process. Someone creates a draft document. That's the author. Sends it out for review, comes back revisions, makes changes, forwards it on for revisions. Next, it gets approved, stored in a document control system as approved document. Goes out, integrates to a training system. People take training on that document before it becomes effective. We go back, the document becomes effective and is pushed out there for use. Next, people start printing out these documents. They'll print out an SOP, put it in a binder. They'll print out forms, use them in the labs or the batch record itself being printed out or the device history record. It's used, executed, brought back. Problem is, many of the systems on the market don't control the external QMS document. So if we look at this ISO 9001 2015 clause 4.2.3, which is a standard in all ISO documents after this, if you look at ISO 13485 2018, you'll see the exact same information. If you look at IATF 16949 for the automotive, exact same stuff. If you look at ISO 22000 for food, same thing. They're standardizing to say, if we come up with a definition of what a document control system should have, this is what it should be. If we come up with what a tr training competency system should have, this is what it would be. So let's look at this in a little deeper. Both a document management system and a document control system would have the approval and review process for documents. Both would have correct version of documents at a point of use, meaning you can only get to the current version. If you have authority, you can get to the older versions, but only for informational purposes. Both would have the ability to identify the QMS documents, keeping track of that current document or older versions. They also would have the prevention of unattended or inadvertent use of obsolete documents to a point. What I mean by that is once it's printed, they don't have control of it. They have the ability to preserve older obsolete documents for a future reference and use. But the big difference is the distribution of external QMS documents. Once a document is printed, actually before it's printed, when the person goes and says, I want to print that document, and they print two copies of it, at that point, the system should be tracking and should be preventing them from printing any more than they're authorized and should have a tracking number on those documents. That's what's looking, the system's looking for in a document control versus a document management system. The second thing is unattended or inadvertent use of an obsolete document. Document management system, it can prevent you to a certain point, but it doesn't know who has that printed copies, what binder they're in or where they're at, has no idea, no way to track that document control system has that capability based on what ISO put in here. So if we look at the FDA regulations, part 211, 100, we see there's nothing in this procedure talking about distribution of documents. It only talks about review and approval and use of the document, but nothing about tracking and keeping track of the printed document, how it's used. If we look at 13.4, or I mean, sorry, 820.40, it mentions distribution, but only the issuance of the document. It doesn't say you need to track it, know where it's used, who's using it, so forth. Why is this important? Well, the FDA is moving away from 820, 211 to the ISO standards, the first one being 13485 for the medical device. They are going planning to use this starting fall of 2019 for the proposed ruling, and then transition over the next few years away from 820 to 1345. So that means for a medical device company, that ISO standard that we talked about earlier applies. 
if we look at other companies, they'll say they're ISO 9130, excuse me, certified. They have to follow those requirements for a document control, meaning tracking of your documents. So if we look at the 483, which I'm going to actually bring up right now, the first part, this is the second page, let me go up here. The first part of this observation two was control of printed documents. The FDA looked, visited this company, and witnessed people printing more documents than they needed to be printing. They had no way to track and know who had the documents. They observed documents being shredded that were on incomplete or partially completed. So that basically this company was not following document control reasons around usage of the documents and who had them. They weren't tracked. The second observation, uncontrolled use of documents, meaning documents that were not approved. Basically, the FDA found that they were on a shared network, these unapproved documents. They were draft documents, most likely, put out there, and then people started using them. And then they actually posted these documents on a board and said, here, use this document for method validation. So if we go back to the slide presentation, we see, as I'm going to re, re point out on the, about the 483, is controls were not in place to ensure submitted paper documents are original. What the FDA observed, that people were making copies of documents. They'd print out one, and they'd make a few copies in case they made mistakes. And then they'd submit back the final document, not knowing if it was original or not. Second thing, they're observed printing out documents without ability to know who printed them out and if they had the responsibility for printing those documents or the authority to. Third thing, the number of documents printed is not tracked. So they had no idea how many were printed out and if they went and reprinted additional ones, they had no idea who had what on the plant floor or in the laboratory or anywhere else that GXP documents were used. Additionally, they looked at the uncontrolled documents, <clears throat> not necessarily the software, but the actual document that was uncontrolled, saved on a local or shared drive, and then printed out and used. So they didn't use their document control system for what it was there for, or their document system, as the FDA mentioned. I'm going to pop right back to the 483 a second and go back to the first pay, uh, part of the observation. Oops, sorry. If we look at this, the FDA pointed out that the GM records used to record raw data were from, now they did mention the vendor, I, done, I blocked it out so you couldn't see, but you could see it if you want to go look up the 483. The document system, they didn't call it a document control because they pointed out that issuance and use of documents is not controlled. So how could they say they had a document control system if it's not controlled? It had no way of tracking the information who printed what, when it was due back to the system, if they had procedures out, when they got revised, did they return the older procedures? None of that was tracked or controlled. So to continue on, if we look at that document system image again, the FDA focused on two areas. First, they didn't really concern themselves about the approval and review process. What they concerned themselves was that there was an uncontrolled document or documents on shared drive. How did that happen when you have a document control system? Why were people saving them to the shared drives or local drives versus storing them in the document control system? But the bigger piece was the tracking of these forms and documents that were being printed out. The system had no capability of tracking this information. The company did not put any logs in to say who printed what, what this tracking number was of each of those documents, and who had them, when they were due back, or when they even printed them, and how many did they print. None of that was captured in a log, on paper, or in the system. So a quick polling question. Based on what I just mentioned, what do you think? Do you have a document management system, document control system, content management system, which I haven't mentioned yet, spreadsheet, or other electronic means, or just paper? 
Linda's going to present this polling question to you, and we'd just like to get an idea what type of system you think you have. Linda, if you could put the polling question up. Yep, it's up there. So if everyone here could vote. It looks like only 17% have voted, so there's still some people that can type in. Awesome, thank you. So uh, we have 50% that say document management system and 33% that say document control system and 17% that say spreadsheets or other electronic means. So there you can see I've shared shared those, those well, results. Thank you, Linda. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, for those that have indicated they have a document control system, let me go back and think. Do you really have one? Are you able to track every document that's printed out of that system by a tracking number as the FDA required and know when it's due back, who printed it, when it was printed, how many copies they printed, and is it the original that they're returning back to document control? If you can do that with the current system you have, then I say you have a document control system. If you cannot do that with the system you have, then you do not have one based on what the FDA indicated and what ISO indicates as what a document control system is. But anyway, I will continue on. So control of your system from document generation to output and distribution from the approved through the approval process to you print it out and you distribute it. You need to control everything. So how could I do this? Well, handling draft or uncontrolled documents, there are a few things you could do. One, most of your systems will place a watermark as approved and effective on documents, but not on the draft. What you should have is a system that would put draft watermark on all documents that are in draft state. On controlled documents, once they have been routed and approved, it should put approved watermark. This is one that you could use for the purpose of training and training only, unless you have some other justifiable reason to be using an approved versus effective document. Once that document becomes effective, it should have a watermark on it. And it should only be used for the purposes it is. If there is no effective watermark, it should not be used for GXP purposes. That is one of the reasons that the observation had occurred, was uncontrolled documents being used for GXP purposes. Next, continue control of draft documents. If you have a save as capability, if you're using Microsoft Word and it has save as, this should be turned off when it's being used within the content of the document control system. When you check out a document using Word, it should have save as turned off, and the only way you can save that document is back into the document control system, no place else. It goes back in there as a draft, still under work, but it's under the control of the document control system. If you're able to save it on a local drive, which I'll discuss in a few minutes, you don't have control of your documents. System does not allow printing of unapproved documents to PDF. If it does, there must be a watermark. So if you have the authority and capability to print to a PDF, it should put a watermark on that document that says it's draft. Now you can put all types of information there, not only draft, but who printed it, the date and time they print it, and so forth. Now, when you get to check in and check out capabilities, only one person should be able to check in or check out a document at a time. So there's no confusion that you have the wrong version in there of that document or version meaning draft version of it. You should have a collaboration type system in your document management or document control system that allows you to collaborate on it. So you can't get into this situation one person checking out and every person trying to check it out. It should control that. If you happen to have the save as available, meaning it can't be turned off by the system, access to shared drives must be controlled, meaning IT must have control those shared drives. So if you have a working area where you save documents for work, shared, it should be cleared daily by IT, meaning overnight, those documents that are in there are removed. So you need to store your documents back in the document control system after you finish working on it. You can't save it on a local drive or shared drive. And then users should be prevented from copying a document from a shared drive to another location. This again is an IT control issue that can be put in place very easily. 
Next, printed documents. All printing should be performed by document control unless you have some way to put a tracking number on it and a log being updated. If you have some way to do that, then that's fine to use printers anywhere in the facility that can be used for GXP purposes. And that, that assigns a control number to it or a tracking number. Again, you should maintain a log book of copies that were printed, the unique ID number or tracking number on each copy, the document number and revision, etc. You need a way to notify individuals when documents are passed due or have been revised. Past due meaning I have a form I printed out, it's due back in two days, how do you inform that person that it's due back? Do you have an email way or the system can notify them that it's due back to the system? Or if you have a revision to a document, how do you get those old versions back? System should have a way to notify the person that the document has been revised and the old version is due back to the system. One way is to prevent them from printing a newer version. Until that happens, they can't print out the current version. Print documents, the system has the capability to manage the printing documents. That means the following as it relates to the findings in the 43. Every copy printed has a unique ID and log number assigned to it. Well, log maintained by the system or by a person. The system should not allow printing of new versions of documents to older, as I just mentioned. Versions have been surrendered to document control. You must still maintain a log of when the documents are due back to document control, unless the system has a way to track this and notify individuals when those documents are due back to document control. Again, you're using a system versus a process to maintain it. The FDA, when they looked at it, they looked at the process and said there's a flaw. They looked at the software and they said there's a flaw. You have no way of controlling these documents. What that company that I know of ended up hiring eight more document control people just to address the 483. Printing of documents. Once copies are printed, no additional copies can be printed, meaning if you're authorized to print two copies that day for that particular batch or that particular process or whatever the reason, you can't print any more than what you're authorized. If you try to, the system should prevent you from doing this. An electronic task is assigned, meaning the user has something assigned to them, a to-do list from the system saying, this is due back. If it's not received by a certain date, then the system can escalate that to their supervisors or to managers or whoever needs to be escalated. If you return a document, you could trigger, based on that document being stored in the DMS, a workflow. Maybe it needs to be reassigned to another control number or tracking number, part of a larger document, such as a batch record or validation package. Or if it's gonna be shredded, put into a shredder or burned, you have to indicate what happened to those extra copies that you have, if you have them, or that one original. Now, control of copiers. There are ways to control copiers. You can use check paper. If you ever had a check and you made a copy of it, it the output comes out as void. That's what this check paper does. Make a copy, the output will be the copy of it, but it will be on paper that says void. You can put a little etch or watermark on the glass if you have an older copier. If you have a newer copier, you actually have the ability to put watermarks on. So you could put something like copy or not original. Something that indicates that this is a copy of the document. When documents are returned to document control, Document control can use a scanner or their eyes to indicate or view the document to see if it is actually the original. It could be a date timestamp of when it was printed and matching it against a log. It could be copy paper or something else, a watermark that gets applied if they tried to copy it. Either way, it is a responsibility at this point for document control to verify that that's the original document. Look for any special marks on the cop by the copy or printers that are placed on when you try to make a copy of it and reject those as not original. Keep a log of that, that someone tried to turn it a copy and not the original. Again, only document control can check these original documents back into the document management system or document control system or shred it or burn them. Okay, 
when using electronic tasks to track documents. This is a system, an automated process that's doing this for you. A task can be assigned or a to-do item whenever a person prints a document. So if they print a form out, it says due in two days, they get a task or a to-do saying in two days this is due. Expiration dates of documents, the same thing. The system could trigger when you finally revise a document, it becomes effective, it sends out a notice a day or two ahead of time that says, hey, you need to turn in all your older versions of this document. The system should know who printed those, who has those documents. And from there, it can say, you need to surrender them because you haven't. We, we never received them back. This again puts a little burden on document control, but it controls. It shows the FDA if they come in that you have control of your process. Okay, what kind of metrics could I get out if I have some kind of system like this? Well, I can look at how many documents have been returned beyond their expiration date, number of documents printed and by who, attempts to print additional documents. So if you're only allowed to print two and I tried to go back in and print again, it's going to say, hey, John Doe came in here and tried to print more documents than he was authorized. Attempts to submit documents that aren't original. This should be tracked. This is a training issue, a GMP issue. It needs to be dealt with. So instead of staying up all night worrying about your document control world, what can I do? This is how it is. How could it be? One, move away from a document-centric to a content-centric system. What does this mean? I've talked to a lot of vendors and companies that say, gee, a lot of my content is stored inside of documents. I have to go and I cut and paste from one document to another or from one document to an application to display it on the screen or to put it in a training system or whatever it is when I'm building training content. That shouldn't be the case. If you move to a content-centric system, the content becomes a single source of truth. It is used within other documents, so you don't have to worry about where used. The system knows where it's used. The system keeps track of all uses of that content. So you're proving content versus proving documents. There's huge benefits with this, especially when you move away from paper forms to an automated process using some technology like BPM, which is business process management technology. This allows you to build workflows, forms, or not forms, I don't like using that word, but screen capture or data capture points in a process. You're not building forms, you're not mimicking your paper process. You're automating the process and capturing that data. Well, what benefit would this give me? Well, the benefit is something like batch records or device history records. When you go to do annual product review, you're scrambling around to find how many CAPAs did I have open for this? What are the batch records? I need to look through all the batch records. Do I have any failures or any discrepancies in these batch records? All this stuff is a manual process for a lot of companies. If you automate data points and content into a platform such as a BPM technology platform, you eliminate this chasing of paper. Your data is available to you. You could do an annual product review any day of the week. You have everything at your fingertips. So when you think about moving away from a document-centric to a content-centric, away from a siloed BPM, a siloed QMS solution or any other system to a BPM platform, that's a benefit. Everything is at your fingers. Everything's integrated automatically. Your applications that you build, be it Kappa, change control, document control, employee training, or employee competency-based training, all that's tied together on one platform. The thing you want to focus on if you go down this path and you want to automate something like batch records, device history records, lab processes, is focus on the 80-20 rule. Those 20% of the processes that take up 80% of the paper. By doing this, you're going to eliminate the possibility of having duplicate forms out there or invalid forms because none, no paper form exists. It's all automated. It's all being captured. So do you remember that desk where that lady was sitting with all that paper piled up or those shelves full of paper? This is what your world should look like. Nice, well organized. A nice clean table, documents well presented. So to summarize, what is a document control system? I looked at ISO 9001-2015 for the definition. 
I looked at ISO 1345 2018, exact same definition. I looked at other ISO standards, IATF standards, and other ones for aeronautics, and they all define it the same way. So they're basically using a content system, capturing what a document control system is, and pushing it to these other standards. They have the same definition everywhere. The 483 finding pointed out two things. This company in particular thought they had a document control system, bought a standard product off market, one of the more popular ones, and found out they didn't have a document control system. They had a document management system because they didn't have control of the draft documents. They were able to be saved off on shared drives. They didn't have control of the printed documents or hard copy. They didn't know who printed what, where they were, how many were printed, when they were due back, any way to indicate if it was original or copy. They had to put a lot of checks and balances in place to control this. Things that can be done. I touched a little bit on this. Well, actually quite a bit on this. As what are the things you could do around printing, around copiers, around shared drives? Things that you should consider doing if you do have an electronic system right now. Pointing out how it could be. Moving away from a document-centric world to a content-centric the benefits of content versus document. Documents don't necessarily disappear, but content becomes a predominant piece of it. So continue forward. This is what you'll do with all your free time that they always tell you automation gives you. All we do is we'll tell you, you'll spend more time working. There is no vacation. Think of it as a nice break, not gonna happen. But at least you'll be doing something different and maybe you'll sleep a little better at night knowing that you have controls in place. So any questions, I'll gladly answer them before we move on to the actual demo of what this could look like in the system. Again, I'm not gonna call it a demo, we're just gonna show you some screens, what it looks like in an automated system. Perfect, Linda? all right, Kevin, we actually do have some questions, so we're just gonna dive right in. And just as a reminder, you can type any questions that you have into the text box um, on your GoToWebinar control panel. Also, just a side note, uh, the slides are available on the GoToWebinar control panel as well. They are there under handouts, and you can download them straight from that spot. So, um, all right, let's get to these questions. So the first question is, what information might we want to track in our log? Okay, well, if we look back at the 483, the FDA wanted to know how many were printed, the tracking number of each one printed. That means if it's a multi-page document, it should have one number for those multi-pages. So if it's five pages, the same tracking number should apply to all five pages. If you printed five copies out, then you need to have five unique tracking numbers. So you need the tracking numbers for each document, the revision, the document number, revision number used, who printed it, the date and time printed, and if there's a time due back to document control, what that is, and how to contact that person to retrieve that document. Those are the things at a minimum that should be in the log. Linda, next question. All right, so our next question is, um, can barcodes be put on documents to store the serial tracking numbers or other information? Um, yeah, so, I mean, you could use barcodes or you could just have text as we'll show you both examples. But a barcode, it could be just a single I-205 or 139 barcode, or it could be a QR code or two-dimensional code that can store a lot of information. The key is you want to put as much information in that barcode to make that information known and to the system. So when it reads it, it has all the information it needs. But the key is the tracking number. It at least needs that number in a barcode or on the screen that it can read when put back into the system. So yes, barcodes can be put on, or should be able to be put on documents when printed. Perfect. All right, our next question, um, are pre-numbered forms a good practice to control your forms? Um, yes and no. The reason I'm gonna say yes, you have a number. The reason I say no is that number will change with every page you print out. So if they're pre-numbered -pre forms and you have a multi-page form, you're gonna have different numbers on that, num on that document. So you may have starting at one through five and you have 
um, a three-page document, is, you're going to have one, two, three. Now, how are you going to track that? The next document will be four, five, six, and so forth. It's not a good mechanism. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. When reviewing a document and you realize it doesn't need updates, would you still progress the revision number? I would say you don't need to unless you find some reason to modify it, which you said it wouldn't be. I would just record that you had that review of the document, no changes were made, and you stay with the current version. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, we have another new question. Uh, why is the compliance standard moving away from document management system to a document control system? Well, it's never really moved away. The definition has changed. The FDA, if you look at the regulations in 211 and 820 or any other regulation, the 600 series for blood and tissue or, or blood, I mean, and biologics and tissue being, I don't know, 1272 or whatever the number is. I don't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, the definition changed. The FDA is using the definition in ISO as to what a document control system is, not what is in the regulations because it wasn't clearly defined. The FDA decided a few years ago that they were going to standardize on 1345, just as they did with the ICH standards for clinical trials and other stuff. They're moving to a harmonization process across the globe so they can, when they do audits, they're all auditing to the same thing. So really what changed was the definition. And I look back in actually the 43s from 2017 back to like 2015, I looked in there, I did not find the description they used. It only came in 2018. That's the first time that that description actually was used to define documents not in control, which I found surprising. So this company fortunately may have been the first one. You don't always want to be the first and don't want to be the last. Well, thank, thank you for them to help us learn, right? <laughs> yes. Um, all right, and there's a follow-up to that question. Uh, which verticals do you think will be first affected with this definition? Well, it's already hit a biological company. <laughs> so, and FDA is moving for, to 1345 for medical device, so it's, it's up to them. I have no idea, but like I said, the first one was a biologic that I know of, and that was in April of 2018. There could have been some earlier, but I wasn't able to find them. All right. That, that might be all the questions we have. I'll just give everybody a minute. Again, if you have any questions for Kevin here, please type them in the text box in the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, we, we do have one question, but I think our next piece will answer that. Um, someone's just saying they're not familiar with Soft Expert, um, but I think why don't we turn it over to Jonas Sear? Jonas Sear, I'm going to make you um, the presenter so we can look at your screen and see an example of a document control system in action. All right, well, have fun, jo hey. Jonas Sear. It's yours. Okay, hello, guys. So I'm Johnny Sear, I work at Softy Expert, and uh, what I'm going to show you in this next 10 minutes is some of the most important points that Kevin just highlighted to us. And so I just logged in the system with a user that has quite a few privileges in the system, and then after that I'm going to log in as another user with less privilege, and then I'm, I'm show uh, what he can and cannot do okay so in this particular case here I just uh, started a new revision process on this particular document so as you can see here the symbol indicates that I'm currently in the draft mode so what I can do from here so if I open this document for editing so what's gonna happen is I'll have this document here so I'm on revision number two now, so the current one is number one. So what happens here, uh, if I want, for example, to save this document locally on my PC, so if I do in a file save as, and on this PC, you can see here that I'm not authorized to save this file, so I don't have that permission. 
but of course I can change this uh, document the way I want and if I hit save then what's going to happen is the system will save this document inside the, the system not in any folder or, or, or server. So now if I try to print this document notice that uh, it's going to appear at the watermark that we have created for it so what's going to happen here if I go there and look at this file which is right here I can see that uh, I have this revision in draft step it was printed on this date by this user okay so I know that this is a a document that is currently under the revision and it's on the first step which is the draft step so I'm going ahead and I'm going to uh, actually uh, send this document for approval so I'm gonna say uh, what changes I did every time we do a change so we have to say what we have done okay so let's say any kind of change so I can save it and then I can send it to the approval step Okay, so I also set my this user to be the approver. So as you can see here now in this symbol, I know that this is in the approval step. And of course, if I open this file and I try to save it, I, I cannot save it locally. And if I print it, it's going to show me that this file is now in the approval step. So I'm going ahead and I'm going to uh, actually accept this approval. So I'm done with this approval. So at this time, the system sent notifications to all the users that needs to be aware of this new document revision. And of course, the system uh, also creates some of the, the alerts regarding to this new document revision. For example, you can see here that I need to get rid of some of the obsolete copies um, that I have. So I'm going to head, I'm going to click there and you see here, so the revision that I have is 01, so I don't need that anymore. So I'm going to return that printed document to the document control and then I will say that uh, yes, I ready to confirm that I have returned that document. Okay, so I don't have my, more of this uh, task to perform and now as you can see here I other users also receive this that I need to print this cop this new revision and then after that the other user will say that yes I received this document so I'm gonna say this one here I'm going to create this any kind of ID here and later on this receiving guy here will notify that he has received this printing cup for this document. So I configure this to be allowed only one copy. So I'm going to say save. I don't want to see the reports. So that uh, task disappear from this user. So then the other user will receive this notification here by the system. So he needs to confirm that he actually received this new document uh, copy. So he comes here. So you can see here one copy. So he can go ahead and actually print this document. So let's just wait a few seconds here. So there's a couple of pages on this document. So uh, okay, so it's done. So now I can say okay, I'm gonna save it. So now I can say yes, I uh, received this uh, 
this document. I'm confirming that I have received this document. So that task disappeared from my list. And if I go there and actually uh, uh, try to open this document, so then I can see here that this is a controlled copy. It has a serial number on it, so we can track this later on from the system, search that document based on this serial number. And it was printed by my user on this date and at this time. So uh, this is the way that uh, we can make sure that we are only allowing to print controlled copies. Now, if that same user try to print another copy, then of course the system is not going to allow him to do that. Okay, so only one. So also, I'm going to head and I'm going to show you, uh, we have a couple of ways to uh, to track these printed copies, okay? So uh, we come to we can come to this screen, and then uh, you know we have all the list of those uh, copies that we have been printing. It shows here the date, uh, the copy station, how many copies, and if I open this, then of course I can view the username and all who signed and who received and all of that, and also. In a more detail, I can go here in the system auditing. And then the system is going to show me here uh, more information. You see the last action I did on this document was printed that document on this date, this time, that particular document, the revision number, uh, the user, the host, the, the printer, the IP, and much more information that we have here. So regular users, they cannot come here and maybe uh, uh, delete uh, this kind of log because, you know, they, they are not authorized to do that and there's no button here that allows them to, to do any kind of uh, actions that they are not allowed to do that. So last one, I'm going to log in as another user. And if you notice here, this user has only access to the document component and also he can only execute tasks and view documents, okay? So if I come here, I'm going to search for that particular document under this category here. So. So it's right here, so the latest revision now is number two. So what this user can do, he can view uh, this document. I'm sorry, I'm going to also go to the view document, not view copy, okay? So so here's the document, right, revision number two. So. If I try to print this document that I have selected here, notice that the system tells me that I'm not allowed to print this document, okay? So I, I can control this, so I'm not able to print. And if I open uh, this document, I, of course, I was granted permission to do that, so I can open this document, but I can only see it. I can only view its content. I'm gonna show you that uh, the system does not allow me to save or to print this document even using this viewer here. As you can see here, uh, the save as button is disabled, the print button is disabled. If I right click, as you can see here, nothing happens. So the system has full control of this document, allowing the users only to view its content. So. Uh, this is uh, pretty much about it, so just to highlight the main points. So um, if you guys have any questions, so you may uh, ask them now, uh, Linda. So uh, if any question comes up, please let us know. Perfect. Thank you, Jonasir. Thank you for that presentation. I don't see any additional questions at this time. We'll just give a minute. 
to type those in to the text box if they have them. Um, and again, the slides are available uh, under the handout section. So not seeing any more questions coming through. So I think that will do it at our presentation. Um, Kevin, if you want to give us any parting words. Kevin, we've, we've maybe lost his audio. I, I see him there, but I don't hear him. So sorry about that, Kevin. Um, Can you hear me now? Oh, there he is. Yes. <laughs> Verizon Network. Um, sorry about that. Um, well, I'd like to thank everybody for attending the webinar and for Linda and Pathwise for hosting this webinar. If you have any questions about the presentation, please, my email is included, or at least mine is, sort of John Yarbrough and Kevin Nicholson. They're available to answer questions related to this presentation. If you have questions about Soft Expert or never heard about it or like to hear more about it, please visit our website or please contact us and we will gladly give you information. And again, thank you for attending. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kevin. Everyone have a wonderful day.